their continuing actions uh, allegedly to obstruct justice, uh, to encourage others to assist them in obstructing justice by making threat towards law enforcement and other government of officials, um, they have turned this into more than a tax case. Remember, since 1994, we have been asking them to show us the law requiring the average American to pay a tax on the fruits of our labor. They have never done so, even during the trial. Elaine worked in the dental profession. Ed was a, uh, worked as a pest control uh, employee, and, and he had just retired. And they just, you know, they had wanted to live on the fruits of their labor and do their thing. They weren't hurting anybody. It started with letters, and it ended with men with guns coming to their house, putting them in handcuffs, taking them away, and putting them in a cage. And for what? The U.S. Treasury Department claims that the Browns hadn't paid federal taxes since 1996 and hadn't filed a federal tax form since 1998. In 2007, January 2007, uh, a jury in a federal district court found the Browns guilty of tax evasion charges. Ed was found guilty of three charges, Elaine was found guilty of 17 charges uh, before sentencing. Elaine was instructed uh, to spend that time at her son's house in Massachusetts to not come to this property in Plainfield. They, they remained on the property, uh, their questions had not been answered. Ed said, show me the law and I'll pay you the tax right now. Never did. Now what would be easier? If the law is there, wouldn't it be easier just to show it to us? rather than go through all this, all this expense, all this, all this agony. Federal authorities say they've taken further measures to squeeze the couple holed up in their Plainfield home going on seven weeks. We have seized their phones and internet service and uh, two days ago we also shut off their power. In March of 2007, a uh, judge signed an order that uh, supposedly said they had the right to seize this property. Uh, the following month in April, uh, Ed and Elaine Brown were sentenced in absentee. They weren't present. Uh, there's been an outcome and they need to surrender. They felt they did nothing wrong. Uh, they hadn't harmed anybody. Uh, and a lot of people agree with them. In, in mid-June, Randy Weaver, who had, uh, whose wife had been killed by people working for the federal government out at Ruby Ridge in 1992, came to the property. I'd rather die on my feet right here with the people like this, good American people, than live on my knees anymore under this de facto government. I don't do legal, sir. I do lawful. Legal due process is okay so long as it's lawful. But if it's not lawful, sir, throw it out. No one is bound to obey an unconstitutional law. We will not volunteer to go into their prison for a non-crime. We have committed no crimes. The next month, there was a rally out here, a concert. Over 200 people showed up uh, to show their support for the Browns. On June 4th of 2007, Danny Riley, a friend of the Browns who'd been staying with them, was walking the Browns' dog, Zoe, here on the driveway. And the dog uh, walked into the woods maybe two steps, and then all of a sudden, a guy stood right up in front of me and uh, w with a full uh, camouflage suit on and yelled, freeze. At that point, I turned around and ran ran for my life. Uh, a round went down range right by my head. I heard it whiz by me. I was screaming at the top of my lungs, don't shoot me, don't shoot me, I'm unarmed. I started zigzagging a little bit. Another round whizzed right by me. They all yelled, freeze, 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 get down on the ground. And I just said, you got me, you got me. And I put my hands out like this and they tasered me. They brought him to a, a nearby national park uh, where they, they talked to him, they tried to convince him to act as an informant to uh, be their guy on the inside. And they uh, told me not to talk to the press, uh, that I'm looking at a lot of t time in jail. So when they uh, released him a few hours later, he went home, he recorded a video and he put it online and said exactly what happened. So again, Danny was out here walking a friend's dog and he was shot at, tackled, tasered, threatened, and now he's in prison uh, for 36 years. The four Brown supporters were arrested in four states, Texas, Missouri, New York, and Vermont. But at one time, all four men were here at the Plainfield home where Ed and Elaine Brown had been pulled up for months. But because of those arrests, uh, the number of supporters who came out and actually helped the Browns, who lived on the property, who, who came and provided them with food um, and other goods, uh, lessened in number. And now uh, Steve Monnier, the U.S. Marshal, later admitted was part of the plan essentially to squeeze their support base to uh, intimidate and threaten people. We worked very hard to come up with a means and a plan 
when the best opportunity existed uh, to carry forward what we had intended all along. On October 4th, 2007, when the Browns were here alone, uh, some marshals came up to the door posing as supporters and uh, initiated an arrest right on the porch. It was about 7.45 p.m. The next day, Steve Monier held a press conference where he touted the uh, effectiveness of their law enforcement agencies and uh, repeatedly hammered home uh, claiming uh, claims that you know they have such a difficult job and it's so dangerous. All law enforcement uh, operations carry a certain amount of risk. In, in this occupation, which is full of risk, this is not a risk-free occupation. Uh, what police officers and law enforcement officers do every day is, is filled with risk. In January of 2009, additional charges were brought against the Browns uh, for the siege for the time they had spent here on the property. Uh, in, in July of, of that year, they were found guilty of a uh, number of offenses uh, related to knowing and conspiring to not allow the marshals to discharge their official duties, which were to serve their arrest warrants against the Browns. Uh, Elaine and Ed were sentenced to 35 and 37 additional years respectively. They're both currently still in prison. Uh, Elaine's in Illinois, Ed's in Texas, and they're not due to get out until they're each 102 years old. So, you know, this is nothing but a death sentence for them. So right across the street from the Browns property is a 550 acre property owned by Stephen Breyer, one of the uh, guys who wears a robe in the uh, Supreme Court. And uh, Ed Brown, uh, before all this started to happen, had conversations with him about the tax issues. And Mr. Brown, he said, I cannot discuss any of this, this subject matter uh, unless I'm seated on the bench, you know, in session with the Supreme Court. What, what do you hope he might have said? That we should investigate this and we should look into it further and clarify it and do something about it. So, I don't know how Stephen Breyer sleeps at night knowing that he was, um, you know, apathetic as that all went on. Who is a radical in this situation? Is it the Browns, Edna Lane Brown, who rightly question whether someone else has a right to their property just because they claim they do? Uh, or are the real radicals the people who believe they have a right to steal your money and if you refuse to pay them or even question them about it, they supposedly then have the authority to come arrest you on your property, steal your property, and put you in a cage. We are grateful for the support and the cooperation the, uh, that we have received from our law enforcement partners at all levels of government, to include our sister agencies in the Departments of Justice, Treasury, and Homeland Security, as well as our state, county, and local law enforcement partners here in the District of New Hampshire. We couldn't have done it without all of their support. Who's the victim? Where's the victim? Do Edna Lane Brown deserve to be in a cage until after, until 2042 and 2044, till they're over 100 years old, when if they're even still around then? Uh, I don't think they've harmed anybody, and in fact, they're the victims. They, they decided to keep what they had earned. These people rely on fear. They rely on uh, their ability to scare you to comply, to do things that you wouldn't otherwise do, to, to allow them to steal your money, uh, money that they then go ahead and spend on things you may find immoral, uh, things that you wouldn't otherwise spend it on just because it's a bureaucracy, they don't do a good job, and uh, this is what happened. It's been a very expensive operation. I don't have the exact figure yet. I would encourage you to stop funding these criminals, stop letting them take your money, do what you know is right. It, it, you, obviously there's some risk involved, but if we don't do this today, just imagine how difficult it will be for your own kids uh, to do so in 20 years or for us to do so next year. If we stand together and we stand for what's right, then we're not alone. And at the end of the day, that's what's gonna make the difference. It's, it's you acting on what you know is right. So I encourage you to think about this, think about what happened here, because you know they went after the Browns in 2007 they, and they're going after people all the time. Um, I would encourage you to stand up, uh, stand up for what you know is right. Us. The fussy them narrate us Because we're making moves Them a try for play and hate us Break us, shake us, chase us Can't face us, too ungracious and outrageous Should I know some man courageous and say Jesus